the Sonos 5 is an all-in-one setup. You need one power cord and everything else is contained within the speaker itself. A traditional alternative will be to buy a pair of speakers that you like paired up with an amplifier connected with speaker cables. Then you will need to add a streamer or a CD source, any other source, which is capable of connecting to Spotify or Tyler or whatever streaming platform that you use. If you were so inclined, you could then repurpose a computer to run Rune. But whatever streaming solution you're looking at, you will still need to link them all up with interconnects to the power amplifier. Then there's a matter of whether the amplifier is well matched with the speakers or not. And you have to worry if the sound signature of the streamer plays well with the amp and the speaker setup. With the Sonos 5, the matching is done for you. It is all housed conveniently into a single enclosure connected to your network wirelessly. And if you choose to add another speaker for a pair, they are also linked up wirelessly. No need to run a cable from here to here. All of these are controlled with a stable Sonos S2 controller app available for free on iOS or Android platform. And it allows you to connect to almost every streaming platform in the world. I usually like to give you a summary conclusion up front in a video, but today my summary conclusion is more upfront than ever. It is already in the title itself. I thought through a lot of combinations of traditional setup and I just can't think of a better, more complete stereo solution at $1,000. The Sonos 5 is supported by a strong software platform. For the rest of August, I have many videos queued up to talk about the Sonos 5s including its place in the whole Sonos home theater offering. Do watch out for those videos. And if you're not yet subscribed on my channel, consider doing so and get first-hand access to my videos. Now, if you trust my judgment, then you can kind of end the video here. My recommendation for a pair of speakers within a $1,000 budget is to get a pair of the Sonos 5s. If you want to find out more, including a frequency response test of the Sonos 5s, as well as a sound demo from a single Sonos 5, as well as a pair of Sonos 5s. Do watch on. Now let's get into the Sonos 5s in a bit of detail here. When you get a single Sonos 5, you will notice that Sonos allows you to place them either horizontally or vertically this way. Now, there are tiny rubberized feet on the side of the speaker to allow for that without marring the surface finish of the speakers. And it appears on all three sides, bottom and the two sides. In vertical placement, there are two orientations you can choose from. You can either have the controls face the left or the right for your convenience, depending on where you want to operate the controls. And you will notice that the Sonos logo will read correctly as Sonos, no matter which way you place it. The brand name Sonos itself is a palindrome. Read either forward or backwards, it still says Sonos. It is also an ambigram, so when you flip it up or down, it still reads Sonos. Branding is brilliant to this end, and it carries through to the design of the Sonos 5s. Whichever orientation you choose, it never looks like the speaker is upside down or the wrong side up. Not only that, another detail that you might have missed is that the volume control switches orientation when you place the speaker differently. In horizontal mode, the left volume button reduces the volume and the right increases the volume. When you swipe across these three buttons from the left to the right, you advance a track. And when you swipe it from the right to the left, you go back one track. When you place the Sonos 5 vertically, the button below reduces the volume and the one above increases it. This is regardless of whether you face the controls to the left or to the right. The speaker detects the orientation and switches the functionality of each button automatically. So the same is carried through to the skip track buttons. When you swipe up, you advance a track. And when you swipe down, it goes back a track. Brilliant in terms of usability and very intuitive. So now you know why Sonos never labelled the volume control buttons with a plus or a minus. It is context sensitive depending on the orientation of the speaker. So how does one Sonos 5 speaker sound on its own? I've mentioned in my previous unboxing video, which I'm linking here, that a single Sonos 5 
quite effectively delivers a decent stereo sound stage. There are three pairs of tweeters and woofers in the Sonos 5. All are individually amped. More importantly, the left and the right tweeters are aggressively angled to throw the left and the right signal as far to the sides as possible. Higher frequencies are directional and it is easier to give a perceived impression of a wider sound stage just by angling the tweeters. Now, when you place the Sonos 5s in the horizontal orientation, you will take advantage of that placement. The sounds coming from a single Sonos 5 will give a pretty decent impression of a stereo sound stage. So if you don't already know, a single Sonos 5 is effectively a stereo speaker on its own. When you orientate a Sonos 5 vertically, the sound changes depending on whether you have a single Sonos 5 or a pair. If you only have one Sonos 5, the left and right channels are summed together and a mono signal is played out. When you have a pair, it will either be assigned to play the left or the right channel signals depending on your selection. The only good reason why you would stand a single Sonos vertically is maybe when you have space constraints. Otherwise, if you're just operating one Sonos 5, prioritize the horizontal orientation for a wider stereo soundstage. Now, the bass response from a Sonos 5 is phenomenal. It is one of those speakers that you ignore when you just look at it because, you know, it's quite small. But when you play a bass heavy track from it, it completely blows you away. Now, try this track from this movie soundtrack of Lucy. It's titled First Cells, composed by Eric Serra. When I first got into Atmos Home Theatre Systems and I was venturing into ever bigger subs, this track was always the one that I went to in order to test the bass response of a new sub. This track will break lesser speakers. If you hear the cones splattering away like the limits have been breached, they most likely are. The notes on this track go so low and so loud most speakers I test gives up and all you hear are the cones and not the sound itself. On the Sonos 5, it is being handled properly. It comes across clean and tight. It is quite amazing how this is handled. In my opinion, if a speaker passes this track, it passes my mark and I will get the speaker. Well, actually, I got the speakers. Next, we will look at the measured frequency response curves from these speakers right after the break. So let's test the bass response out objectively. In fact, let's see how the speaker handles the entire human hearing frequency range from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. I've been relying on a U-Mic microphone and the REF software, REW software, to measure the frequency response of the speakers that I test. If you're keen to check out some of the other videos I've made measuring the frequency response on various Sono speakers, do take a look at my playlist. Now, if you look at the frequency response chart that I'm posting right here, you'll see that the frequency response curves represented by the green line for one Sonos 5. And without trying to overanalyze this, you will notice that the lower frequency response is looking really good. It peaks out at about 42 Hz, which is mighty impressive for a speaker of this size. Now, more impressively, the minus 2 dB point from the peak is at 30 hertz. I've had a pair of SBS Prime Tower speakers before. It was driven by a 30 watts per channel power amplifier. And that delivered about 30 hertz at minus 3 dB from the peak. That setup obviously got very loud and is mighty impressive. But the Sonos 5 being able to deliver 30 hertz at audible levels in your mix is even more incredible. And if you contrast this with the Sonos Arc, the arc peaks at about 50 plus hertz and drops off a cliff after. Not to mention the bass issue that the arc suffers from. Again, you should not expect a soundbar to deliver anything meaningful below 50 hertz, but I wasn't expecting the Sonos 5s of this size to deliver 30 hertz bass either. Yet 30 hertz it delivers. The Sonos 5s represents the pinnacle of sonic performance from one single speaker within the Sonos product lineup for music. And the only thing better than a Sonos 5 is a pair of Sonos 5. You get true stereo imaging and an increased combined output. How much increase? Let's take a look at the chart here. Now, the red line represents the stereo pairs 
output at the same volume setting. The increase in performance is heard and decisively measured and proven right here in this chart. From the sub 30 Hz all the way to 500 Hz, the pair of Sonos 5s deliver a much more substantial baseline. And it is not by a small margin. It looks like a 3 dB increase throughout and most parts delivering as much as a plus 6 dB increase. And if you are familiar with the dB scale, a 3 dB difference represents a perceived loudness of 200% increase or decrease in terms of volume. In short, you'll get twice the bass and the mid bass. This is seriously impressive and probably the main reason why you should be getting a pair of Sonos 5s rather than a single Sonos 5. The timing between the two speakers are impeccable for a pair of wireless speaker. They never sound out of phase. Vocals are locked right to the middle and it is easy to imagine that the singer is right in front of you, right in the middle. If you get this pair of speakers, at no point in time will you ever get the impression that you're linking up the two speakers wirelessly. It is as though there is an actual physical cable running between them and the timing and the sync is as good as a pair of wired speakers. Now there is a major shortcoming in terms of the line-in. The line-in on the Sonos 5 looks like it's been designed for only music input and music only. Why? The first reason is that when you place the Sonos 5 in a surround setup paired with an out, for example, the line-in stops working. Sonos says it's got something to do with the fact that the Sonos 5s are being used in the TruePlay profile for the surround setup already, but it just sounds like a lazy and a lame excuse. Similarly, I wanted a way to quickly group rooms and group in speakers in and out of a surround setup, but Sonos has yet to implement that. I thought room groups were a way to do that when they first announced the Sonos S2 platform, but basically it was just a way to play different groups, different rooms in a pre-configured group. Nothing more than that. The second reason why the line-in doesn't work for home theater application is the fact that there is a lag when an analog source is being converted into digital signals for the Sonos ecosystem. There's no optical or HDMI input for the Sonos 5s just one analog input. So the only way that you'll get sound from your TV is to use a headphone or the line level output. But when you do that, your sound will be out of sync and then you can't sync it with the visuals. The image will come first and then the sound will come. This delay is what is called the lip sync issues. It is not enjoyable to watch movies with lip sync issues. So if you choose to use the line in on the Sonos to use it as a speaker for your TV, you can choose between two modes, compressed and uncompressed. If you use an uncompressed signal, you can operate at about a 75 milliseconds delay, which is actually noticeable enough for most people. If you use the compressed mode, the delay goes up to two seconds and it becomes extremely noticeable. In fact, the visuals, the video becomes unwatchable. There are ways to reduce the lag by introducing even more powerful processing into the Sonos products. But however fast the processor is, there will still be a delay. It will never be zero. In my experience, anything above 10 milliseconds will probably be noticeable, especially in scenes where there are explosions and gunfire. It is distracting when you see the explosion go off and then the sound follows after. Most of the other shortcomings are inherent in the entire Sonos ecosystem, not specific to the Sonos 5s, uh, such as the true play restrictions to iOS or no true high-res audio support at anything beyond 48 kilohertz. Now, if you're keen to find out a little bit more about these shortcomings in the Sonos ecosystem, a good place to start will be the video that I've done on the top 10 Sonos feature requests. I'm linking it up here. I think an obvious one when it comes to music lover is that the library cataloging limit of 65,000 songs as a pesky limit and it's not solved with the Sonos S2 platform. Other than that, on the hardware side, there's really not much of a shortcoming when it comes to the sonic capabilities of the Sonos 5. So let's get to the summary. In summary, if you're considering the Sonos 5 for music, you won't be disappointed with a pair of these guys. I've been down this road so many times before. 
First time when I got the original Play Once, I got myself a single speaker, but adding a second brought about a new dimension to the sonic performance. And then the Sonos Play 3s, which I followed the same route, thinking that the Play 3, being advertised as a stereo capable speaker, was able to deliver proper stereo. It wasn't long before I added a second Sonos Play 3. And then the Play 5 Gen 2 came, and when I heard it in the store, I brought one home straight away. Same reasoning, the size is even bigger than the Play 3, so stereo from one box should be better. But next day, I headed back to the store to buy a second. This time round, I wasn't going to repeat the same mistake, I ordered two of them right away. The sound staging and the imaging from a stereo setup with two speakers is the wireless solution to what you're looking for. If you're in a market for a stereo setup with a $1,000 budget, stop right here. Linger on and consider this pair very seriously. Then you can consider moving on and try to find another combination to better these in terms of price, sonic capabilities and convenience. You might not find a wireless solution to best this setup for $1,000. Now before I end today's video, I'm queuing up two demos. One with a single Sonos 5, followed by a pair of the Sonos 5s, playing the same track. While you might not be able to hear how great it absolutely sounds, you will get a good idea of how the performance from a pair is relative to a single Sonos 5 setup. I'll leave you to enjoy the sound demos, and I'll see you in my next video.
So if you turn the Sonos 5 to the back side, you can see a few holes. <laughs> now if you turn the Sonos to the back side, you can see the holes. <laughs> Two holes. Okay. So there's a small round hole there, quite tight. I think most people don't use it much. You might think it's only for output, but no, it's for, <laughs> for input. <laughs> you stick the 3.5 mm jack in. I think we should try to keep this channel strictly for wireless audio speakers. But audio speakers and audio products are full of inputs and outputs anyway, so... Bah.